This is Kilcray Friary, which is located in the barony of Musgrave, County Cork, a short distance west of Cork City. It was founded in 1465 by Cormac Lauder McCorrick. It is strategically located in the rich valley of the Bride River, which runs close to its north side. The approach to the friary from the northwest is both picturesque and unusual, travelling over a narrow humpback bridge from which a splendid view of the site is to be had. The friary was founded for the Franciscan observance. While it has been abandoned for a long time following its turbulent history, the impressive survival of this building, the stories and legends about those who were associated with it will ensure that it continues to hold an important place in the history of Munster and particularly in, in my own barony of Musgrave. The name Gilcray means cell of Sira, who lived in the 6th century and is said to have founded the nunnery about a mile east of the friary in the parish of St. Owens, now called Ovens. When the Franciscan friary was founded it was known as Kilkir in her honour. Today its name has been anglicised to Kilcray. Therefore it appears that Kilcray was a location with ecclesiastical association long before Cormac Lauder McCorrig founded the Franciscan Friary in 1465. In the 1880s marked the end of the Franciscan tradition in Kilcray and in 1892 it was taken over by the Board of Public Works as an architectural monument and has remained the same condition ever since with minimal restoration work. As we know, the friary was originally for the friars who went about their daily life, living the Franciscan way. As we see today, there is a large number of burial monuments within the friary buildings. They include headstones, tombs, burial plaques and some 17th century grave slabs. They range in date from 1625 to the 2000s. Some are still being erected today. It should be noted that few burials located within the walls of the friary during the medieval period, except for those of the founder and some ecclesiastics. According to local tradition, the medieval burial ground was located in the field north of the friary. It was only when the complex went out of use as the friary became used for a burial ground on a regular basis. Today burials still take place at the friary in certain plots, despite overcrowding, unsanitary conditions and a century of pleas for the friar to be given a rest. Among those commemorated are Cormac Lauder McCorrig, the friary's founder, Arthur O'Leary, the outlaw, and many of the families living in the surrounding area. This is Kilcray Castle, which is a ruined 15th century tower house and barn located to the west of Kilcray Friary. Unlike the friary, which is owned and maintained by the National Monument Service of Ireland, the ruins are in privately owned lands. The lands around and inside of the castle are used to field cattle. The castle is listed as a protected structure by the Cork County Council. As we can see from the sky, there is a long grass walkway from the road into the friary. This walkway is adorned by ash trees on both sides and opens out near the friary's west gable to give a spectacular view of the Anglo-Norman architecture with the amazing Gothic features which include the intersecting window over the main door. Through the window, one gets a glimpse of the tower structure which stands proud in the Cork countryside. This is Kilcray Friary. We will explore its structure and heritage as it stands today. At the moment we are standing inside the friary. Now this room used to be the nave. The nave is where the congregation would have gathered for mass or any other rituals that have occurred inside in the friary. Now as you can see behind me there is a large tower. Inside of that tower stood four floors. Each of those floors stood on carved stone which gave the wooden floors structure and strength. Also there was a wooden stairs that stood in that tower. Now that no longer exists as the wood has decayed and hasn't stood the test of time. Now this room, the nave, has changed over time and has become a cemetery. And also as you can see with the roof above us, that is no longer here. That also hasn't stood the test of time. At the moment I'm standing in the tower of the friary. As you can see here behind me, a small bit of conservation work has been done. Now this timber structure has been put up where the original spiral staircase would have stood. The rest of the tower remains untouched, but conservation work could happen to return it to its original beauty. We are now standing in the day room of the friary. 
this is where the friars would have spent their spare time. There were two fireplaces in this room, one at the bottom left-hand corner and one halfway up the room. There was a ground floor and a first floor in this room. As we can see, the first floor doesn't remain as that was made of timber, but it, the timber joists used to sit on the walls which are protruding out from either side, and also the timbers used to go into the holes that remain in the walls. If conservation work were to take place, the same con construction techniques would be used as this would maintain the heritage of the building. I caught up with local man Fred Gilbert, who I spoke to about Arthur O'Leary, more commonly known by his Irish name, Art Nilera. He was a famous Irish poet, dying at the young age of 26 in 1773. His poems continued on to play a part in Irish education. His remains lay in the fry to this day. As we can see here is his tomb. Yeah, we're standing here beside Arthur O'Leary's tomb. Arthur O'Leary was born in Reddy. Yeah, but in Yama Croom. Okay. And uh, he died a quite young man. And he's the subject of a famous poem called uh, Queen Arthur Leal, which was composed by his wife. Yeah. And recited at his grave site. And was that used a lot then in the Eton Circle? That was used in, in the curriculum. Okay. When I was a young boy. So it would have been a very famous poem at the time. Four, yes, yes, okay. Okay. Which would seem like he's on a cone. Yeah. That poem is on a cone and that's Queen Arthur Leal and all those. Okay. 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 Right. This is where the body of Cormac Lord Macquarie remains. This is the man that constructed Kilcray Friary. He is also the man that constructed Blarney Castle, which is only situated 20 miles away, and that is also in the division of Mosby. The Friary's function has adapted over time, transforming from a busy living space for the Friars to live their simple life, to a site for those who have passed away. Many things have remained the same, one of them being the fact that it is still a place for people to come and pray, and remember the great people that have gone before us. In general, the architecture in Kilcray is plain. However, there are some nice pieces of Gothic architecture. Very few buildings were built in Ireland using Gothic techniques, but many buildings, including the Friary, have elements, such as doors and windows, in the Gothic style. Gothic architecture is characterised by lightness. However, as we have seen, it certainly isn't a light building, with large, thick stone walls. We will explore some of the architecture in question. Shown is a view as we walk through the nave from the main entrance to under the tower. The church is entered through a doorway situated at the west gable. It consists of a nave and a chancel divided by a tall slender tower. The nave was part of the church in which the congregation was accommodated. It was made larger by including a south aisle a transept and two chapels and a transept aisle. The interior of the church, as well as the rest of the friary buildings, has functioned as a graveyard since the 17th century and consequently it features a very large number of burial monuments. Elsewhere, the nave is lit by three windows. The first consists of a deeply recessed pointed example set in the angle between the tower and the nave. The other two occur towards the east and north wall overlooking the cloister. Beneath these windows is a pair of plain arched tomb recesses. At the front of the nave is the church tower and it is of typical Franciscan type, tall and slender. It rests on four piers, each of which is chamfered at the angles. The tower separates the nave from the chancel of the church and is pierced by two round-headed arches. A low lintel passageway leads to the transept from the south-east corner at the base of the tower as we will walk through in a moment. Although the overall architecture of the building is plain, aspects are beautiful and really enhance the appearance of the friary. It is a shame that there are no pictures of what it used to look like originally when it was just built. That was over 700 years ago and it is still standing today. In relation to conservation of the friary, there are many aspects that could be updated. Be it the floors, the tower, a roof put on it, the structure of the building is actually quite sound. However, the aspect of the building that I am focusing on will be the main entrance. This is the west facing gable. In relation to the west facing gable, there are two aspects I want to pay particular attention to. That is, the door and the windows. The restoration of the door will be a simple process which would just involve the creating of a new oak door, similar to what was previously there, an oak door made of planks. However, I want to focus more 
on the intersecting window above that door, which is the main focal point of this west facing gable. The first aspect of the window to be tackled would be the internal bar tracery. Little remains of the original design but small pieces protruding from the window jamb. It is important to always repair over a place so as many original materials can be repaired as possible. The original windows would have been hand carved more than likely out of sedimentary soft rock like limestone which is dominant in the area. It is important to as much as possible use the same crafting techniques as done originally to maintain the heritage of the building but also keep that craft alive. The next stage to repair will be the decorative trim that is in the exterior of the op of the window. Like the window, the original crafting techniques would be best to use. The glass would be the last process in restoring the windows to avoid the glass being damaged doing any other work. The designs that are created on the glass are often unique and due to the fact that picture of the original window including the stained glasses that exist, replicating another intersecting window of a friary around the Irish countryside would probably be the best option. To conclude my video, I would like to thank all the people who have helped me create it. Mr. Fred Gilbert, Ms. Denise Mayer and my family. The creator of this video has given me a great insight into not only the importance of the heritage of the Friary at Kilcray, but the importance of our heritage as a group of people. We must acknowledge the past and treasure it. Not only the material objects like the buildings and artifacts, but the people who have created them. Those people and their ways must never be forgotten, as it is where we have all originated from. Thanks for watching.